Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Stevens and I'm the developer of Cult Game, the strategy text RPG game where you get to make your own cult. Very cool. Uh, happy I'm good to show you this today. This is a tutorial or rather sort of a design explanation, a devlog, if you will, sort of, about how I created the central architecture for my game. And I think it can be applied to make any game in the text adventure genre or maybe just text-based games in general. Uh, the video that I'm making today won't feature a specific programming language, but I'm going to use pseudocode to show you how I expressed my ideas that I uh, originally implemented in C++. Uh, and to use this design architecture on your own projects, all you'll need is an object-oriented programming language. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. So, when I first started programming text-based games, I did it in the way a lot of new programmers approach the problem. You have a player, and they're given a prompt like this. An evil wizard stands before you. What do you do? And you get some choices, like attack the wizard, talk to the wizard, or use an item, right? And the way you might think you need to program this is using a bunch of if statements together, sort of like this. Here's, here's how we're doing this. We prompt our player, we accept their input, and then we change the game state to take us to another bit of code. And another bit of code that we're uh, that this uh, choice is going to take us to is it's going to take us to another bit of code that looks exactly like this, uh, just in a different part of, of the file that we're programming. And this code would exist in a giant list of if statements in a loop that would go around each time a new response is made. So we could label the game state on this uh, this one right here, something like if game state is equal to uh, in front of wizard. Then we see this, and this would be all of this would be an if statement, right? That would be everything in here would be part of this, and then. Our whole uh, file, our whole game, would just consist of of if statements. Above this, if, if and then you have another if, if, dot, 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 and you would have other game states. And then maybe one of them would be the attack wizard, right? Uh, you would just have so many of these above and below, right? And then this would be your game, right? I uh, let's be clear before this video continues. This is not the ideal architecture I'm talking about. This is the naive approach that I did when I first started this out. Um, well, this design approach technically works, and you could theoretically develop a big text adventure game this way. You really wouldn't want to. You would very quickly create thousands of lines of code that would be very hard to read. And, uh, you know, I'm sort of um, just showing you a small example of uh, you would have one up here and one here, but uh, it would be very hard to read unorganized and not follow the good software design, uh, design principles of encapsulation and functional abstractions. You'll be destroying your mouse wheel, scrolling up and down your code editor, desperately trying to find the exact if statement you left off on, which is the certain part of the game you want to edit. And at that point, you're not having any fun making a game, you're doing tedious work on the level of data entry that you do not deserve to burden yourself with. So I knew this would inevitably be a problem if I didn't fix this and I just continued developing the game this way. And I was inspired by Luis Mayano's framework that he made called Coldbox. It's a web development or application development uh, platform that he made and it's wonderful. Um, very recommended on my part. And in Coldbox, you can create an application that's composed of three types of objects. You got views, handlers, and models. Views are what you see on your computer screen. It's the UI, the graphics, what's what the app looks like. It's how you interact with it. Uh, handlers are objects which can understand the input that the user gives to modify models and change views on the screen. And models are the persistent objects that store data. Okay, so let's see how this application design uh, applies to a text adventure game. 
So what do we need to make a text adventure game first, right? Well, we need to show the player our prompts, we need to give them a set of responses, and then we need to accept input like we had earlier. We can make a class of objects which contain uh, a prompt and a set of responses, and then we can accept input. We can send the input that we receive off to another class of object that we create called the handlers. Okay, so you can see for our handlers here, we have a function that's defined for the execute variable. This is uh, just purely for understanding right here, um, but you could have a different function defined for each specific handler object, and that's really cool. You could uh, make every handler do something different and modify the game variables differently, and you could define as many handlers as you want on the fly, so that's really cool. So as for our models though, any object or container that can be accessed or modified by a handler fits as a model in this design platform. So for our game, uh, theoretical game with our evil wizard, uh, models could be our player's inventory, our player's stats, or perhaps the stats of the evil wizard. Models can be any data type, they just have to be accessible to the handler. If you turn each one of our original bulky if statements into a view and a handler, this will turn our entire game loop into a small bit of code that will look something as uncomplicated and, and approachable as this. You just have a loop here, you're showing the view, you're getting an input, you're showing, uh, you're getting the, the, cor the correct handler for the specific input that the user selected, and then the handler executes its function, it modifies the game variables, and it also changes the view. So this, you take our entire mountain of if statements and you turn it into this, and it makes everything great. By changing the architecture of our design, we are still keeping all the same content that we would have in our theoretical game, but all the prompts, responses, and things that can happen are cleanly defined into separate organized files. We no longer have that massive file that does everything. We can rest our eyes and we can uh, have our head stop spinning. Um, so that's great. So how I implemented this design pattern in my game was creating view objects that contain various types of text variables and then a collection of response objects that each had their own data, uh, such as specific handlers that could be accessed if a specific response was chosen, right? I used a hash table to store all of my handlers so I could easily access them by a descriptive name. So the handler objects were a bit more tricky. For every handler, I needed to store a unique execute function as I needed the ability to have unique things happen for every separate response that was chosen. I did this in C++ by storing a unique lambda function as a member variable of each handler object. In other languages, you may have to see what other methods are available for you to define functions at compile time. All right, once I had all this structure set up, I mass constructed view and handler objects in separate files. So for example, in the main menu, I had a handler loader and a view loader for every single interaction and thing that needed to appear on the screen for the main menu. And then that worked out great. And uh, I imagine for future parts of the game that I create, let's say like maybe a battle system, uh, there's gonna be a battle view loader and a battle handler loader. And that's all I need to do to keep building the game on top of uh, what I have at the current moment. So I just need to create more views and more handlers. And uh, I can, um, create more models if I want to create more bits of functionality, but uh, that's all I need to do. All that's left at this point, if you followed along, is to develop your game and to keep creating, keep creating uh, views, handlers, and connecting them. You don't need to worry anymore about architecture. You can finally make your game. So that's very good. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or need help working on your own projects, write a comment below this video. I'll try to get back to you and uh, see if I can help you, especially if it is with implementing this uh, framework or this design pattern into your own project. All right, take care, bye-bye.